I'm Donna Blanchard, and this is your Think Tech Daily News for Friday, June 5th, 2015. This Sunday, Mexico will hold its midterm election. There's a lot at stake. President Peña Nieto's seat, all 500 members of Mexico's lower house of Congress, and almost a third of the country's governors, as well as mayors and legislators in more than half of the states. President Nieto needs a working majority in Congress to support a budget overhaul in response to falling oil revenues and to restart his stalled security proposals. A majority would also give his party control over writing the fine print of a new anti-corruption system it reluctantly supported. Polls show that 50% of the population disapproves of Mr. Nieto's performance. He's been in question over a house his wife purchased from a government contractor, mishandling of an investigation into the disappearance of 43 students, and continued drug violence, nearly non-existent economic growth, and questionable governing tactics. In fact, five other presidential candidates have been killed, one shot just this last Tuesday. So how can President Nieto expect to win another election? By buying votes, of course. Claiming that his goal is to bring the poor of Mexico into the age of technology, he's giving away digital TVs. He's vowed to give over 10 million of them. And he's not the only one. Other candidates are giving away baseball caps, food packages, school supplies, and even rooftop water tanks all with a softly spoken caveat, we'll give you this in exchange for your vote. And many of the working poor in Mexico accept the items they would not be able to afford otherwise. Buying votes is illegal, but can only be prosecuted if complaints are made, and that's not happening. As the former president of the Electoral Institute, Luis Carlos Ugalde said, having money doesn't guarantee that you will win, but not having money guarantees you won't win. A group calling themselves BDS, or the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Movement, has been focusing on Israeli and Palestinian relations, insisting that Israel cease to occupy Palestinian territories they've held since 1967. And they're trying to push that initiative by influencing a telecommunications company named Orange to boycott Israel. They nearly succeeded. The chief executive of Orange told journalists in Egypt that he would like to cut ties to an Israeli cell phone service provider that operates in the occupied West Bank. The chief executive eventually stated that he regretted his words in Egypt, and today the French foreign minister said that Orange, a partially state-owned telecommunications company, is firmly opposed to a boycott of Israel. Israeli officials and many Israelis say the boycott movement unfairly singles out their country for condemnation in a region where serious human rights abuses are endemic and see this as a strong testimonial to the need for the U.S. to resume peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians. A coalition of religious and human rights leaders is demanding that President Obama support the financing of abortions for women raped during violent conflicts by members of terrorist groups like the Islamic State in Syria and Boko Haram in Nigeria. The group includes Jewish, Christian, and Muslim members. It's accusing the president of talk rather than action in addressing the grim fate of women and girls. The most recent impetus for such a move is the raping of women by Boko Haram members explicitly to impregnate them to ensure the continuation of their lineage into the next generation. A federal law prohibits the U.S. government from using foreign assistant funds for the performance of abortion as a method of family planning or to motivate or coerce any person to practice abortions. That amendment, known as the Helms Amendment after North Carolina Republican Jesse Helms, has banned the use of federal funds for overseas abortions since 1973. But the religious groups argue that these rapes have nothing to do with family planning. Though Mrs. Obama has tweeted her displeasure of the Boko Haram's kidnapping of Nigerian women and girls joining the Bring Back Our Girls movement, there has been no affirmation or movement from the president. Here in Hawaii, the USS Arizona Memorial reopened. The repairs were completed after midnight. Last week, accidental damage to the memorial was caused by the hospital ship USNS Mercy. Military and civilian team members and the National Park Service worked together to complete the repairs safely and ahead of schedule. Happy Aloha Friday, everyone, and a hooey ho. Donna Blanchard, Think Tech Daily News.